you've landed inside the bubble with Harley G, a podcast for the superwoman. I am a mother, wife, and ambitious career woman who realized one day that part of me was unfulfilled. I launched this platform to help other women discover and walk in their ultimate purpose through shared stories of trials, fear, dreams, courage, grief, and triumph. No matter who you are or where you're from, there's purpose in your story. This episode is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. When was the last time you reviewed your insurance policy? So it's been a while, huh? Well, no worries. My friends at the Austin Brummett Agency would love to hear from you and provide you with some amazing rates. Give them a call at 678-402-8262 or email them at abrummett at farmersagent.com. Insiders, Inside the Bubble with Harley G is now sponsored by BetterHelp. As a partner of this episode, listeners can access the BetterHelp link located in the show notes to receive 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp and get matched with a therapist who will listen and help. Go to BetterHelp, that is Better H E L P dot com slash inside the bubble the link to get started thinking about buying a car but dreading the process enter car official where we're changing the game at car official we believe car buying should be transparent informative and yes even enjoyable our experts are here to guide you provide you clear information and honest advice no jargon no pressure just a helping hand every step of the way. Whether it's understanding financing options, getting clarity on fees, or simply finding the perfect car for your needs, we've got you covered. Join the car official family and experience a new era of car buying, where trust, knowledge, and customer care drive everything we do. Car official auto sales, empowering your journey one car at a time. Visit us today and see the difference for yourself at 770-627-4296 or on our website at www.carofficial.net. Welcome. I am Harley G, host of Inside the Bubble with Harley G. Thank you for tuning in. The purpose of the Purpose in Entrepreneur series is to inspire women who have burning desire to do their own thing, but don't know where to start, or women who are fully committed to their nine to five, but can't seem to find time to pursue their purpose outside of work, and women who struggle with trying to balance life's demands, spouse, partner, children, extended family, friends, community, involvement, etc., while running a business and are experiencing the feeling of guilt because of not committing an equal amount of time to all of it. Well, today I have Dakita Trine joining me to share how she's defining her purpose in her chosen line of business. Welcome, hey, Dakita. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You look amazing. Thank you. you As always, as always. So Um, happy to be here. She's kind of a little bit of my inspiration. But anyway, so thank you so much for coming on the pod today. And today I want to have an honest conversation, open conversation with you about your entrepreneurship journey. So my first question is, Share the name of your business, of course, and what you offer and who you serve. Well, thank you for having me, first of all, Harley. Um, It's funny that you said, um, be transparent. Mm -hmm. I'm the right one. Let's (laughs) let's be transparent, let's be raw. I'm gonna give you the good, bad, Keep it real, keep it real. We're gonna keep it real. Yes. So my name is Dakita Trine. I'm the founder of Pure Necessity by Mm -hmm. Dakita Trine. Mm -hmm. And we're a lifestyle service that's targeting young professionals to help them to acquire wealth, through real estate investing, investing or through career advancement. So okay. that's 
pretty much the particulars of my organization. We love it. All yeah. right. So pure necessity. What's behind that title, though? Yeah, it's, 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 I'm going to be honest. It was one of those things to where um, I am a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Mm -hmm. oh. And so that was my line name, or that mm -hmm. is my line name. Um, wow. So my favorite number is 23 uh, for Michael Jordan. But pure necessity, um, you think of necessity in reference to this is a need. This mm -hmm. is essential. In order for there to be impact, you have to have these tools, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So pure necessity was my line name and it just continued to evolve mm -hmm. um, from college to, through career advancement and mm -hmm. even through relationships. So mm -hmm. um, it basically embodied, you know, my brand and mm -hmm. how I care of myself. So pure necessity really just stuck over time wow. from my line name. Yeah. So you're talking about a purpose that started way back when, yes. right? When you probably weren't even thinking about purpose. Absolutely. And from 2001, has... wow. when I pledged, wow. up to the right. Now, so it's like what, 20, point, 20 something whole years. Who that I would curate that exactly. into, you know, my business. But yeah. I'm so grateful. That is so awesome. And that's yeah. the thing I love about purpose is that it's there's been breadcrumbs along the journey mm -hmm. that we just did not pay attention to. Exactly. And then when it all comes full circle, you're like, what? You yeah. know, so that's why I love purpose because purpose never seems to it, it always amazes me how it all works out, I, all aligns um, as we think back about right. experiences and you know, who would have thought yep. Your line name right. today, 20 years later, would be your legacy. Exactly. Right? So Exactly. Love it. Um, and when did you know you wanted to pursue entrepreneurship? Because I, I have a, once you answer that, because yeah. I have a story behind that. So, yeah. yeah. I'm going to be honest. I did not want to be an entrepreneur. Because I, you, I, I did a not. little birdie told me yeah. that you were something I else. Was, I rebel. I was, listen, blatantly <laughs> rebellious about entrepreneurship because I was afraid, I was scared of the way I define entrepreneurship when it comes to administrative tasks. I was like, oh. I don't want to be uh, intimidated by taxes. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be intimidated. Yeah. I don't want to have to do the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So honestly, that was the first thing that came to mind was just the paperwork that comes behind it. Mm -hmm. And my mind couldn't, I just couldn't wrap my mind behind having to do that because it intimidated me. Mm -hmm. It felt like more work. And it also seems like Mentally, maybe I was lazy a little bit. I'm like, wow. I'm okay. So yes, I'm comfortable. I am comfortable. <laughs> I am stable. I will sit here in my collect this paycheck and, and keep it moving. I'm going to retire. Yes, I'm gonna ride this joker out. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. promise to goodness. Literally, um, I was afraid of it. Mm. But 2020 happened. Mm. That's kind of um, like the precipice for like a lot of entrepreneurs. When 2020 happened, I was in my nine to five. Mm -hmm. uh, while it was a shift for um, the nation, it shifted and impacted me in such a way to where I'm so grateful mm -hmm. and thankful for COVID because mm -hmm. it curated and shifted my mindset when it comes to entrepreneurship. So in my nine to five, I do coaching and training and HR. And I'm at home, we're mm -hmm. all at home, mm -hmm. and my demands with my organization <laughs> skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And my value and skill set skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. Like stocks went up with yes. Dakita Trene uh -huh. in my nine to five mm -hmm. because of my value and what I could bring, bring virtually. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So now, mind you, I'm in HR. Mm -hmm. I have access to people's salaries. So ding, ding, I was ding, ding, like, ding. I was like, wait a minute. So this person is- I feel like a doctor on call the way that I'm serving <laughs> and supporting yes. these other people yes. who are making way double, Much. triple, quadruple mm -hmm. what I'm making. Mm -hmm. That was that was basically the turning point for mm -hmm. me to where I said, you know what? I'm serving and supporting these other people. I could take what I'm doing now, now. Yes. and work for myself. Mm -hmm. And what catapulted this, and we'll talk about this hopefully, uh, is, is the relationships that you build, build over the years. Yes. I got a random phone call, Harley. When I say random, you know how you have people in your phone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily talk to talk on to a consistent day. basis. Right. So there's this colleague, a former colleague that I worked with um, years ago, seven, eight years ago, that called me. And I said, well, how did she call me? We, we didn't have a, you know, a connection. So I answered the phone. She said, hey, 
how are you? I'm like, fine. Mm -hmm. She said, I know you probably wonder why I called you. She said, I just got done with an interview and all I could think about was this is Dakita's job. Ooh. And I was like, huh, what? And so long story short, my name was in a room that I wasn't in. Mm. She said, this is the type of position that Dakita could do. Now, it wasn't a nine to five position, right? Mm -hmm. It was more of a contractor opportunity mm -hmm. to do this contract work for an organization. Mm -hmm. um, just do it for the year. And she mm -hmm. was just like, all I kept thinking about was this is your thing. Mm -hmm. You could do it. Do you mind if I refer you? Absolutely. Who says no? I, right, Who says I'm, no? I'm so grateful that no, she shared that with me. Right. So I did the interview. Mm -hmm. I was the person for the job. And when I was talking with her, thank you so much for referring me. You know, um, I don't know what their decision is. Mm -hmm. You know, what should I ask for? Mm -hmm. And she was just like, six figures, top, like at the least. Mm -hmm. I said, six figures for contract work? For just like 12 months mm -hmm. and I'm only doing it for like 15, 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, she was confident. She didn't flinch. She, she, she learns like Dakita, mm -hmm. ask for it. Mm -hmm. I am in HR, but I was not bold or courageous or had a position or the mindset to just ask for my worth. Mind yes. you, it's 2020, right? Yes. So fast forward, they were like, what would you like to be paid? And I stuck to it. I mm -hmm. stepped out of faith and I said six figures. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't flinch. They didn't say anything. They was just like, okay, guess what? Like weeks later, signed the six figure contract mm. for a 12 month assignment for 20 hours. Mind you, I have this nine to five. You still got your nine to five. Still got my nine to five. Exactly. And now this was evidence. Oh yeah. Oof. I'm working way too hard for somebody else. And I just made six figures part-time. Right. Right. For yourself. For myself exactly. as a contractor. Right. Making six figures. So that was the turning point where I said, oh, entrepreneurship is it. I need mm -hmm. to be able to shift my mindset to operate in that because mm -hmm. it's so much more that I can bring mm -hmm. value to myself and mm -hmm. to others and, and really maximize, you know, the value that I have. Yes. So, yeah. First of all, there's like, so many things in that that I yeah. want to tap into. And um, first, 2020, you talked about being in the HR field. Hmm, I can yeah. kind of relate to that. Yeah. So as you, you're going through this global pandemic that's happening, right? Mm -hmm. What are some things that you felt like you experienced doing all of that that were challenges for you mm -hmm. even you know you talked about your your decision to become an entrepreneur as a result right. of this opportunity right another thing that i want to say too is when it comes to purpose you don't need to be in a room right god will put you in the room even if you're not there and he will send people that will put right. you in the room so you absolutely. don't need to be there yep, absolutely. so that right there mm -hmm. is always to me is a determination of purpose but what were some of the challenges in 2020, as you think about entrepreneurship, that this, we're, we're yeah. not even thinking about this opportunity yeah. that you were like, okay, I'm, I'm not, right. you know. How do I start? How do I, how do I do how this? How do I start? Yes. The first thing is, you remember I said I was so rebellious mm -hmm. and intimidated with the word. And once I start to really tap into the value and the skill set that I can bring, and with me being in alignment with my purpose in general, is first like embracing that I have value to bring, so mm -hmm. I need to bet on myself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that mind shift of betting on myself, mm -hmm. if I ain't got no, I'm, I ain't got, <laughs> I'm, I'm a Southern girl at, at heart. If I ain't got nobody else, you got I, I have myself. Now I am the person that has, you know, analysis paralysis and I need the structure, the ABC, one, two, three, what do I need mm. to do first? How do I get started? You want to have the whole plan right. planned I out need before the it starter happens. kit. I need the tool, <laughs> tool kit. kit to get started, right? Uh -huh. And that's just how I'm academic. I'm so structured when it comes to just being type A. Mm -hmm. But the first step is mindset that I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. You could have the kit, kaboom, the starter kit, the tool belt, all the resources, you know, all the, the YouTubes. But if your mind is not there, it's absolutely mm -hmm. not going to be sustainable and exactly. it's going to fail. Exactly. It's going to fail. Yeah. So soon as I snapped into that mindset, I was like, okay, just start, mm -hmm. you know, 
And that's when I position myself to not get so caught up in do this first, get your LLC first, you know, mm -hmm. get your, you know, find funding. But the first thing was the mindset. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I was like, okay, how am I going to fund mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do, mm -hmm. right? And so that was my, I would say, hint to where, or I would say my secret weapon, mm -hmm. being in HR, having a nine to five. Mm -hmm. My nine to five curated my position to uh, start the entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. So it funded my start. Yep. Mm -hmm. It funded my start. Mm -hmm. um, so, what resources, tips, advice, networks can you share with our yeah. audience, with our listeners, if they're wanting to pursue entrepreneurship themselves? Yeah. Um, the, the, after you get your mindset, really position yourself to get in a circle of peers mm. and colleagues that are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell your sister, your mama, your auntie and them, your vision or dream if they have never done it or they have not experienced it. Mm -hmm. So position yourself to get a circle village mm -hmm. that um, has done it before or is doing it so you can tap into, exactly. you know, what adversity looks like, how to get started, you know, how to navigate and mitigate conversations, mm -hmm. right? Uh, once you start to center yourself around the circle, then it's going to organically happen where you start to receive invites mm -hmm. to networking events, yep. right? So uh, you may hear people say, get in the room, mm -hmm. you know, or, or do networking. I'm going to take that a step back. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get in a room and show up and be cute and eat the, you know, eat the food, eat the food and orders. drink the drinks and take the pictures. But what, did, mm -hmm. what tangible insight feedback did mm -hmm. you retrieve from this network that you're going to go back and implement into your business. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So with that, being intentional about where you choose to go network and who you choose to be in that space because mm -hmm. of your targeted audience. Okay. Right. Perfect. But it means absolutely nothing if you're not in the room and you're not capitalizing that opportunity, that that time frame, that exactly uh, or that exact event. Mm -hmm. So those are just a couple how of, to you know, how to maximize. This. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back a little bit to what you said as you were talking about entrepreneurship and your challenges and your reservations into getting into yeah. it. It sounded like you took a step out on faith and you trusted and surrendered yeah. that as you are walking in your purpose, whatever is supposed to happen, his plan is already in motion. Right. It's already like his plan. God's plan is already in motion. You mm -hmm. just have to get or on be the bus, obedient. be obedient, uh -huh. and get in alignment for it to happen. Exactly. Right? So, with that being said, <laughs> God already knows what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, even before we may even think it. Mm -hmm. So that faith is something else. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to align that with being fearless as well. So, like me being able to tap into me betting on myself. Mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, faith-based mm -hmm. to where I knew how to exercise my faith. God, I'm yes. about to trust you because mm -hmm. I'm about to do something that's uncomfortable. That I've never this, done before. this is not stable. Mm -hmm. This is this is new uncharted territory. I need you to lead me, guide me mm -hmm. in the midst of this newness. Mm -hmm. But I know that because I'm exercising this love and faith that God Mustard seed. That's all I need. That's all you need. That's all I yes. need is that you're going to lead me along the way. Exactly. And God has favored me. All, the, and all my, the I will tell you, Harley, my faith today in 2023, today, stronger. is so... When I tell you, I will jump in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have time to explain to people why I do what well, I do. I, I don't, if you are not in alignment with what faith <laughs> looks like, I can, I, 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 I'll meet mm -hmm. you on the other side. Mm -hmm. But my faith today is even stronger and bigger than what the faith that I used in 2020 mm -hmm. just to get started. Yeah, right? because you have to, for me, that has to be my, my foundation. Right. It's a non-negotiable. Right. Right. Because, Absolutely. Like, you, I don't know what I'm doing. This is, this is new yeah, to me. New. But this is clearly my purpose, my calling. Mm -hmm. So I have to wholeheartedly believe that, okay, this is what I'm supposed right. to be doing. I don't have to know the plan. Right. I just have to be obedient 
and follow the mm -hmm. breadcrumbs that right. are yeah. set before me one yeah. step at a time and he will send the right people Literally. on your journey and direct he, your path as absolutely. you start to continue to progress mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely so i had mentioned earlier um my my my, my beliefs um mm -hmm. of entrepreneurship before so for me, entrepreneurship was never something that wasn't going to be in the cards for me. Mm -hmm. First of all, it was, I want to say that my beliefs on entrepreneurship was that it was the people that own the storefront, you know, like you gotcha. own the store or a restaurant. So there was or, a perception. Yeah, it was this perception of entrepreneurship, it, like, and I was like, oh, I don't know. That seems hard, mm -hmm. you know, that seems difficult. Yeah. And I don't know, to me, it wasn't, it wasn't glamorous. Right. Right. right? Um, I always had the desire to become an actress, an yeah. entertainer in front of the camera. Look at it. Look at where we are now. But I always had, bless you, I always had the desire to do that. And for me, that was glamorous. Right. Or even the corporate job, being in that boardroom, being that woman in the room, yeah. that, you know, that leader, that executive, like that for me was like, that's glamorous, glamorous right? Yeah. And so based on my parents who are first generation immigrant, I was thought you work yourself through the ranks, you work yourself up, work yourself you up. work yeah. hard, you keep yeah. your head down, you keep it moving, you listen to yeah. what you're being told, mm -hmm. you follow, you know, you know, right. other people that the have, rules of you the follow path. the rules, you exactly, know, stay right? the course, you know? absolutely, yeah. and you do that, and that's how you grow up to be successful, yeah. my mother was a nurse, my dad was a mechanic, um, blue collar, and so for me, that was my example, and success looked like growing through the ranks of corporate America mm -hmm. up until two years ago. Okay. As recent as two years ago. Like, and wow. for me, the turning point was um, same as, as, as a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs during a pandemic. I had, me being in HR, I'm preaching to the population and employees right. that you need to take care of yourself. Oh, Mental yeah. health was a huge thing during the pandemic right. that was not very prevalent prior to the, right. the pandemic. And so people were paying attention to that now. Right. And I was preaching to people to do that. Meantime, I'm in the closet having multiple breakdowns. Yeah. I got to be wow. a teacher. I right. got to be a wife. Coach. You got to right. be a coach. You right. got to be a coworker. You got to be a mom, a sister, a wife, all, all of, of that. Right. And mm -hmm. I was like, I can't do it. Yeah. I just cannot do all of this. And I'm and I'm yeah, having so meltdowns real. after meltdowns. That's so real. And that's I'm so just real. like, this cannot be my life yeah. right now. And finally, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit of an extrovert. So the whole being indoors thing didn't work for me. <laughs> you say a little bit. I, I'm going I'm to challenge you on that. You're not a little bit of an extrovert. You're a lot of bit of an extrovert. How do you say a little bit? Extrovert? A lot of bit. I'm a lot of right. bit. Right. And, and actually, we are in very similar. Same for me. Yes. I was in such high demand yes. during that time to where yes. I basically was like, I have, I'm about to tap out. Yes. I'm about to tap because out. Because you're constantly pouring, I'm out. pouring You're pouring you know? out at home. Right. Now, you're not having Absolutely. the de-stressor right. of at least prior to pandemic, I was able to have that commute home. As much right. as we complain about commute, yes. The as separation. much as we complain about our commute prior yeah. to pandemic, but I realized that actually needed that to separate yeah. work from transitioning to into decompress. home life, exactly. right? right? And you didn't have that now. My commute became five yeah. seconds yeah. from the office to the right. kitchen, right? Right. And then meantime, in between that, right. I'm getting knocks on the door every right. two minutes. Right. What's for dinner? What's for lunch? He's fight. He's arguing with yeah. me. He just hit me. I I'm yeah. getting all of that, right? And I was just like, I can't. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this. I can't. Yeah. Like, I really got close to, to that line. And I went for this. Pos so this position came up at work. Mm -hmm. And like you said, when you're not in a room, sometimes... Okay. Sometimes you, you're put in a room. It doesn't necessarily mean that that room is, was meant for you, but it's a precipice to something else. Right. It's exposure. It's like a, a nugget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it puts you on that path. Right. I was put, I, a position came up 
I didn't get the position, and that was the that was the straw that broke the camel's mm -hmm. back. And at that point, that's when I just I pivoted, and I decided, okay, I need to figure out what this purpose thing is about. Right. Yeah. And that's how I became into my purpose. So, when you think about your purpose, mm -hmm. and have you ever gotten to a point where as you're going through this journey, and I know you have, but mm -hmm. tell us about a point when you were walking on this journey to purpose and you just felt like you're going to throw the towel in. Oh, yeah. Every day. <laughs> I quit every day. <laughs> every I quit day every I quit. day. I'll start again tomorrow. <laughs> I'm being so real with you. You quit. Every, single Every day. day. You can have an agenda, a schedule, oh. a calendar mm -mm. for what's about to happen in mm -mm. your business. Mm -hmm. And there will come a random phone call or an email or a child mm -hmm. or a school phone call or a sister. Mm -hmm. Something is going to like Want to. interrupt yes. your, your ish. So I say I quit every day. <laughs> But he won't let that's you. What, that's he that's won't the let definition you. of entrepreneurship is resilience. Yes. To be able to go through the adversities mm -hmm. of your business and your personal life and whatever else you have going mm -hmm. on. Resilience is to be able to go through it, come out on the other side, pick back up and be able to build your faith back up mm -hmm. to be able to sustain the next adversity that's yes. going to come. Yeah. So yes, I quit every day. <laughs> every day. So what? Know? So what brings you back? What builds up that resilience? Oh like my if God. you are at a yeah. point where you're like, okay, I quit. What's your community? What's your village? What what is the thing or the person or the the circumstance yeah. that brings you back yeah. around to ground to you keep, back keep into it, that purpose? To keep going. Yes. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I am internally motivated. I mm -hmm. am self motivated. But when it comes to legacy, that's so huge to me. Mm -hmm. My kids, I have a at this time, eleven and a six year old who are are looking at how mm -hmm. I respond and looking at my actions. They looking at how I maneuver, how I um, actually mitigate adversity. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm really teaching them and showing them. Yeah. So I that's. That's inspiring in itself, mm -hmm. you know. Like London, she's a uh, she's six. She will challenge me, and she'll oh. say, "Mommy, you didn't get on a bike today." Oh, mm. she mm. will call you out because yeah, she, she knows that I do mm -hmm. the Peloton. She'll mm -hmm. say, "Mommy, you didn't run around the neighborhood. Why? Mm -hmm. Why haven't you done that?" Mm -hmm. And she's genuine, but it's such an ouch it to is. where I'm like, she's been observing and assessing what I do, mm -hmm. and she's also my accountability, even yes. when she doesn't realize she's my yes. accountability Absolutely. because that's what legacy is all about, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, I have to tap into it's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. Not about Dakita Trinae. It's mm -hmm. bigger than me. It's about the people that's going to come, you know, uh, behind me. It's going to be about uh, me training and educating and being an advocate for those that might think about it. But now I realize I'm just a vessel. God, God is using me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a, obedient because it's not about me. Mm -hmm. Now that I've been positioned in this place or in this in this space, I realize that I'm making more impact than I thought I that I realized I was. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, so there's absolutely. always someone observing, watching your move. Mm -hmm. You know, while I'm working and operating authenticity, mm -hmm. my goal is to continue to inspire people, whether that's through you know real estate investing or advancing their career. Because everybody's not an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I get that, yeah, right? Yeah. But yeah. my goal is for you to be inspired and motivated in such a way to where you like. I saw Dakita, how she operated, how she mm -hmm. moved through the adversity. I know I'm going to get to the other side, right? So can you tell us about a time when you experienced a failure, but uh -huh. as a result of that failure, <laughs> you were able to, because part of it is, is failing, right? You yeah. have to fail to keep moving so forward. And for me, I felt I was so fearful of failure. Yeah. For me, failure was like this thing that could not happen. Okay. You talk about being Taipei and being a perfectionist, yeah. right? So it's like, to me, that, that means you're trying to control right. your environment. Right. Even Absolutely. though sometimes we know we can't, right? Absolutely. So what, what did that look like for you? Yeah. Like failing? Oh, why did you say it with such emphasis? <laughs> because failing. It's no, important. No, this is it's really important. <laughs> it, in order to be an entrepreneur as well as you're going to be told no, you're going to be rejected, mm -hmm. you're going to be, you know, uh, you go, you're going to fail. 
Now, I'm not going to ever forget this, and, and I will share this story just because it didn't happen at the time of my business being curated, but it was such a, a shock to where it actually uh, catapulted my, one of my whys. Ooh. So when I made my first, when my husband and I made our first house purchase, very first, like I'm 26 years old at the time we made the purchase. Um, I lost or we lost $3,000 in that transaction. Mm -hmm. And when I say loss, uh, we, we could, I could have been more educated on the process of what that looks like. Yeah, we were told, you know, this is what this means. You know, you put up this money for this and it's called earnest money here. And if you change your mind, you lose it. But the impact for a 26 year old. Mm, 3,000, that's a lot. $3,000 is a lot. huge yes. hit, mm -hmm. huge, huge hit. And so I share that story because at the year that I, that happened, 2007, the next year, I got my real estate license. And my why, one of my whys is, I need to be able I to educate yes. my clients on the process and hold their hands so, to the point to where they understand what this looks like and what mm. it means. So that failure was became... recycled mm -hmm. and used to um, benefit my clients in the future. We don't go through stuff just for us. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. The failures that we go through is for us to be resilient, get over it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and overcome it so we could tell this story mm -hmm. and use it to implement for someone else. Mm -hmm. It's never for us. Right. Yeah. Mm. It's it, never for us. <laughs> but that $3,000 loss, it's so funny, I'll still be like, ugh. Right. $3,000. But I use that as my, like, it was my fuel. Like, this cannot happen again. I don't want this to happen to anyone that I come in contact with. Mm -hmm. So I was so intentional about choosing the type of client mm -hmm. that I would service and support for that, uh, for that one reason. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can you call out two of your core values and how you utilize those core values in entrepreneurship? Oh, for sure. Like we've been talking about faith and purpose, mm -hmm. but definitely spirituality. Um, so you can't tell me that we're able to operate um, day to day without having an internal source. Mm that is positioning us to keep going. My internal source is my God, my savior, Jesus, that's who I, that's, that's, that's my, my source. So tapping into, you know, my faith and belief system has honestly never failed me. Mm. It's never failed me. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. say that it's, it's never failed me, Harley. And even with adversity, trial, tribu tribulation, while I may ask a question why at that time, as time progresses, you get slapped in the face and say, oh, mm -hmm. now I know why. Right, exactly. You I don't always that. get to we see. We don't see that at, in that moment, in right. the reality, exactly. and the thick of it. But yes. you are positioned and later on you're like, oh, that's, yes. that's that why. And sometimes I, you never get yeah. to see, you right, never get to know. Right. So that's when you put your faith in it, you right. apply your faith in your life. Faith you can't see. Whatever. You cannot it, see it, that's you have what, to be able to operate in exactly. that. So that is the core value that I am fully in belief and alignment with. Um, it's my insurance, I say, I use the word insurance policy like mm -hmm. lightly, but like my protection, like, if I don't have faith, I have nothing. You do not mm -hmm. have the key to your name. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a walking, living, breathing testimony of what you see today of like people will ask, how in the world do you do what you do? Mm -hmm. And I literally have no answer. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a higher being power that God has provided me. He gives me new grace. Mm -hmm. He gives me new strength. He gives me the joy to be able to enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell you like the functionality of me being able to go through mm -hmm. the hour to hour, day to day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know how I, I did know. it. Yeah. Think about Holly, like, let's say you're preparing for, you know, an event yeah. or you are uh, preparing for your next podcast or whatever. Sometimes in that preparations uh, 
phase, you zoomed in, mm -hmm. laser focus, mm -hmm. right? It may be 30, 45 days, 60 days, however long it takes, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say you take yourself out of it months later yeah. and you go back and you look at the video or the pictures or the preview yeah. and you're like, how did I do, how did I even do that? Yes. Or you might even say, I don't even remember. I don't even, because you don't connect because you just in it. God mm -hmm. is using you in that, Exactly. right? Yeah. So you realize that there's something that's higher than ourselves mm -hmm. that is helping us to continue to do the work that we do. Yes. You know, so spirituality is definitely a huge part of my core values for my business. Okay. Yeah. And what, uh, so, you know, this Inside the Bubble with Harley G is a podcast for the superwoman. Um, <laughs> whether you are a mother, whether you are a high achieving career woman, yeah. uh, woman, um, it is geared towards the superwoman. So what does a day in the life of the Keto Trine look like? I, I, I would say a hot mess. But, <laughs> um, You're just like, it, <laughs> People outside looking in would, would I make it look good. I, I you do. Make it look real you do. Easy. You it's do. Pretty, I feel, yeah. I have several positions. Mm -hmm. And when I say positions, meaning I have my nine to five question, uh, my nine to five. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, real estate. I have consulting. I have a whole family and mm -hmm. I, you know, my family includes husband, kids. It mm -hmm. also includes sisters. Like you, you get what I'm saying? Like I have yeah. several positions. Mm -hmm. And so what I have learned is to set boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, and this set boundaries for anyone that is attached to me that has given me that permission, mm -hmm. that position. Mm -hmm. Boundaries are set with my nine to five. Boundaries are set with my, within my relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on it. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> but I, I am definitely better today than I was like yesterday. And mm -hmm. what does boundaries look like? Boundaries means Dakita cannot continue to exhaust mm -hmm. my skill, value, position, love if I have not been poured into. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Am I really being cared for? Mm -hmm. Am I being, am, am I practicing self-care? Uh, self you remember mm -hmm. how you were saying during your time, you were telling people, you know, make sure you practice self-care mm -hmm. and all of these things. So I'm like, but let's, let's, let's take a reflection. Mm -hmm. In order for you to get the best senior director of employee engagement and culture, the best mommy, the best wife, in order for you to get all of these things, I have to be able to be my best self. Mm -hmm. So I set those boundaries. Okay. I actually had to have check-ins with the village or those people mm -hmm. to say, hey, remind, I gotta hold you accountable too. You know, if you want to pull for me and I don't answer, respect that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. have a boundary. It might be an image, uh, uh, I'm just gonna keep losing this mm -hmm. dig on me, right? <laughs> but uh, it may be a boundary to where they feel it or mm -hmm. may not notice it. Uh, depending on how I operate, mm -hmm. you know, with, mm -hmm. with those um, people. But setting those boundaries is gives me my imaginary uh, superwoman cape, superpower. right? Mm -hmm. Or superpower, um, but also being attentive to myself, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being intentional with that. So I, like I said, I'm working for Yes. It's okay. It's okay. So yes. I've set it up where I would do quarterly self-care retreats okay. or, um, I did read this, there was this meme I came across. I was, actually, it was another, it was actually another podcast, a person uh, by the name you of You cheated Jared, on my podcast? Is that you know, what you just said? You just, you cheated on my podcast? No, I didn't cheat. You know, okay. we, as entrepreneurs, we continue to get and learn and acquire information. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. So, I heard that we can have these spas, massages, and do all these things. And then you come back still and feeling like crap. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of that? That was so, a band-aid. Right. So if you don't take care of the inside of whatever that ish is, mm -hmm. you, there's no massage, there's no spot that's going to mitigate mm -hmm. that. So guess what? I have a therapist. Yes. Yes. My therapist is on speed. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. We, we like every two weeks, therapist. Mm -hmm. And that has been a game mm -hmm. changer. changer. 
Yes. For myself personally and for my business, because when it comes to, she was the one that told me about the boundaries because mm. I didn't know the word no. Yes. I was just doing it. I was just pouring and I was just serving and sure my pleasure is it, I can do it, you know, mm -hmm. and not realizing I'm, you know, putting myself and digging myself in the ground. Yeah. So mm. that okay. was, the therapist is what's giving me my superpower. The secret you know, is out, y'all. Y'all need to get a therapist yeah. if you don't have one. Okay. <laughs> for sure. All right, so we have come to our special segment of the pod, okay. which is called the wild card question. All right. So I have cards in my hand. So I'm going <laughs> to let you pick one. Oh my gosh. And wild I'm going to ask you a question that's on a card. Okay. Okay. Whew. Okay, I'm trying to fan these things out. Okay. All right, ma'am. Wild card. Let's yeah. get it. Let's get it. Okay. All right. This says, can you share a time that really humbled you in your life and mm. how has it fueled your purpose now? Mm. Oh Lord, I need <laughs> tissues. <laughs> She's, I need to, she just threw the car. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Ooh. Ooh. This happened recently. Let okay. Let me get the card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You might need a box of tissues. Um, uh -huh. So um, earlier this year, just through routine checkups, um, I came across um, doing my regular mammograms and there was a area that needed further attention. This mm -hmm. happened in uh, March of 2023, this year, really like February-ish, you know. I do routine checkups, all of that. So for whatever reason, Harley, it just didn't sit well with me to where I was like, ugh, this is not, this doesn't, sit where with me, I don't think this is good. So I need to get a biopsy. So uh, got a biopsy, the biopsy, they still said there's this area, you know, this was in my uh, left breast um, that we're concerned about. We can't see, it's not picking up uh, even with the biopsy, like, um, so we need to take this further. So uh, further testing, um, the ultrasound didn't pick up, you know, and. They did the biopsy and the biopsy was like, okay, this is benign, but there's still an area where like, let's just get them removed. So long story short, I had to have uh, tissue removed to minimize um, risk of cancer for uh, my left breast. This happened um, in a 60 day cycle between March and April. When I tell you, the impact of a, how your life can change uh, with the doctor's report in a matter of seconds. Um, it was so mind blowing to the point to where I was like, you know how, you, I'm sure everyone's had a time in their life where you're like, why me God? Mm. Why me, right? And so I was very anxious. I couldn't sleep, I was restless because I, when they said, okay, let's have the surgery, let's have it removed, they were still talking about, and then we'll get that tested. Mm -hmm. So it was like never ending. And I'm like, oh, is this ever gonna end? You know, and I was so grateful for all the care that I got, you know, during that time, but it was terrifying. But I was like, God, I trust you. Remember I told you my core value, mm -hmm. you know, is my faith and mm -hmm. spirituality, but I just didn't understand the why, like I was taken through the ringer, like, oh, mammogram, okay, come back. Let's do ultrasound, mm, come back, we'll have to do biopsy. So imagine basically for, for days that I'm taken through this, this journey of, I don't know. Mm. So when you can't see, you know, what it's going to look like, all you have is your faith. Mm. That was so humbling. Um, but what fueled my purpose was after the surgery, I was out on assignment um, for a client and that doctor called me back. She said, I'm ready to tell you. I know you've been anxious. She said, everything's benign. You're normal, you're good to go. And I was just crying. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for allowing that. But I, I took a step back and said, why did I go, why did I go through that? Mm. And, and I thought about it. So my procedure, you go crack up. When I tell you that was the best two days of sleep that I got, <laughs> I was put under for like, you know, it was an hour and a half procedure or whatever, but I got put to sleep and I was like resting for two days. Mm -hmm. That was the most peace 
and the best sleep that I got. And so God reminded me, I need you to rest. Mm. So my purpose, even when how I serve my clients and how it fuels them is to have people to understand that it's not about you, but at the same time, it is about you because you got to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So now as I support my clients, mm -hmm. I am being intentional when it comes to the care of what a self-care looks like. Mm -hmm. Have you set those boundaries, mm -hmm. right? Not only have you set those boundaries, but have you positioned yourself mm -hmm. to where you're presenting your best self because you rested. Got and it. that was such a, ooh, mm -hmm. when I say humbling, mm -hmm. like it didn't even matter. Like not one, one phone call, not one email, none of that even mattered, mm -hmm. you know? So that's when I said, oh, it's definitely about my legacy. Now mm -hmm. it's bigger than me. So that experience in itself was, uh, it was, I understood the why. Like, okay, Dakita, while you out trying to save the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, one client at a time, what yeah. are you doing for yourself? yourself. You know, exactly. so choosing myself first is essential in order for me to be able to pour into the others mm. and my clients. Wow, that's an amazing. Yeah, yeah. And very, um, yeah. you know, touching experience. Yeah. Life changing. Life changing, yeah. for sure. Um, so my last question for you is, what's next for Pure Necessity in your journey of entrepreneurship? Yeah. Like what's coming up next? What can so, you tell insiders? Oh my gosh, I'm yes. so excited. So, okay. um, I curated my business through my nine to five. So what's next is my, I'm literally uh, thanking God and believing for what, what road to resignation looks like mm -hmm. for pure necessities. And what road to resignation looks like is not just in the, uh, the practical sense of resigning from my nine to five, but in the sense of resigning from um, being controlled by other people, mm -hmm. you know, or, or other interests or other entities that tells me what my trajectory is going to be, mm, right? Okay. So what's next for me is being able to get in front of people like you to tell my story mm -hmm. and to share and inspire others that you can absolutely do both. Mm -hmm. You can actually have a nine to five and mm -hmm. be successful in your business. And I'm going to give you the tools to position yourself to do that. Mm -hmm. And so not only that, is I'm trying to build this real estate portfolio mm -hmm. so that I can continue to make money in my sleep and my kids' kids and their legacy, they can see what that looks like for, for uh, our family mm -hmm. and for generations to come. So um, with that comes scaling. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the process of trying to figure out what scaling looks like, how mm -hmm. it feels. Yeah. I'm on the cusp of that. I should be doing that, but the way my life set up, Listen. like I said, I'm working pro No judgment. Workers. No yeah. judgment. We're working no on judgment. it. We're working yeah. on it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, really, it's the hashtag road to resignation. What that looks like. <laughs> like it. So, hashtag road yeah, to resignation. For sure. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dakita Trine. This was fabulous. Fun. Coming on the pod, sharing your journey, absolutely, um, your experience through entrepreneurship. I know there is somebody that was able to gain a lot of insight oh, from so. your words of wisdom. And so I thank you so much for gracing us with your oh, presence, pleasure. with your experience on the pod. And, um, you know, we're going to keep an eye out for Pure Necessity and see. Thank you as so you much for having me. I'm excited for what's to come and will continue to support you. Women supporting women is absolutely essential yes. in order for us to continue yes. to grow mm -hmm. and collaborate and do things together. So yeah. let's do it. Thank let's you. do it. I hope you enjoyed our show today. Hit the subscribe button and share this pod episode with your family, friends, and girlfriends. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Inside the Bubble HG. Let's keep the conversation going. Drop us a heart emoji. Engage with us. We would love to hear from you. Season two is now available on your podcast streaming platforms and full episode videos are now available on YouTube. For access to our YouTube channel, please find the link below in the show notes. And remember what I always say, there's purpose in your story.